Good afternoon. My name is Wang Xinxin. Mm, I'm a city planner in China, and I have 17 years of experience. But as a landscape architect, I'm a brand new student, so please give me more suggestions after my presentation. <laughs> so, um, my research question is, how can a green space framework shape the sustainable urban transformation of a regional Auckland? As many overseas people, I came to New Zealand for ideal lifestyle. The reason I like Auckland is because it's unique natural beauty and awesome lifestyle. For me, the essential character of Auckland life is people's leisure time very closely relate to the natural environment, like volcano fields, coastlines, and sports fields. People in Auckland have a lot of outdoor activities. And reflecting city form, the most dis distinctive character of Auckland is the decentralized urban areas integrate with a great, uh, a large range of green space network. This interrelationship is really fantastic and I think this is an important reason of Auckland livability. Mm, however, recent, recent years, there are some challenges on urban development. First, according to the Auckland plan, there are approximately 1 million population increase in the next 30 years which will cause much more pressure on natural environment and urban structure. So the challenge is, can we accommodate the raising population and keep the current lifestyle? And secondly, the urbanization process will last much longer than 2014, somehow last to 2100. And this means that Auckland will continuously grow after 30 years. And uh, at the same time, um, cities around Auckland um, will become bigger and bigger and closer to each other. Sooner or later, Auckland will become a regional city and uh, connected with cities surrounding it. So the second challenge is, can we avoid urban sprawl and maintain the interrelationship between urban transform and green space? In order to find the possible answer, I look some examples for um, how regional cities shape their spatial structures. During the urban plan history, there are numerous efforts to anti sprawl. Uh, among them, the most effective way is the environmental legislation in the USA. Uh, this law put a large range of land out of urban boundary for future growth, and it's also registration between public, public space and private land. So this method is a very effective way to prevent urban sprawl and keep planned <coughs> urban form. Another example is Salt Lake City. Uh, from these images, we can <coughs> see Salt Lake City is a linear city, about 100 miles long, with several sub-cities sub along the motorway. Uh, in this plan, there are six elements to prevent urban sprawl. Among them, four, four of the elements are natural elements. Prevent the city sprawl to the mountain and the lake size. And uh, another two elements are urban separators. This keeps the distance between different subcenters. <coughs> Uh, in this way, mm, separate the different subcenters, prevent them connect together. So this is a linear city, regional city. A similar strategy was used in European countries. 
If we look at this plan, the sustainable community strategy in England, uh, we can see the green belt was used as a natural boundary control. It prevented the city spread to uh, southern and western area and uh, use another strategy, the real V parallel orientation strategy, guide the city developed to the uh, eastern and the southern direction. So this is an example of uh, prevent um, <coughs> develop, uh, development direction. And uh, more recently, the East Coast uh, Migration Plan described a linear city cluster in Australia. Uh, from this picture, we can see um, the city cluster expands 1,700 kilometers with 17 cities separate along the coastal line. Um, these cities were isolated by the regional green space, including ecological area and agricultural farmland. And the latest case is the original plan for Auckland. In this plan, um, based on linear city and water city concept, and the form a uh, necklace of town centers along the motorway. So from the case studies, uh, we can see green space framework plays a cr critical role on shaping urban transformation of regional city. So how can we use this idea in Auckland development? I looked at the Auckland map and um, found a small town on the north of Auckland uh, named Puhoi. Um, this town is uh, on the motorway one and close to the coast area. Uh, when I went to there, I uh, found this town uh, has pretty nature and a historic village. Um, and this is a um, picture about this town. So I'm going to plan a green space network um, to maintain the current lifestyle before the ongoing development. Mm. Uh, thank you for listening. Please do me some advice. Mm -hmm. Now, some comments. There, you can start now. Um, <laughs> I'm just reflecting on it, actually. I, I mean, you, you've taken us through the, the basic ideas of growth management, um, starting, I suppose, you were talking about the Portland stuff in 1973, and uh, then you're probably moving through Newman and all those types of things, um, just in case of growth management. And I think what you're sort of talking about is if we're going to intensify how to ensure we've got sufficient open space to meet the needs of intensification. Is, is that where you're going? Excuse me. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I think it's a really critical question um, if we are going to intensify to ensure we have a certain type of open space. And I do know that that's a question that Auckland Council is physically asking itself at the moment because I've actually got one of my own PhD students looking at something very similar to this. Um, and Auckland Council is actually grippling with this issue about how to intensify and to provide sufficient open space and then what types of open spaces and the quality of that space is and then who's going to pay for that space is a really interesting question and I know the council is grippling with. So I think it's a really exciting day ahead when you move into that space. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I agree. It seems like you made a really good start with um, the selection of your uh, research models and uh, potential models and it, it seemed like there was a consistent sort of theme in how you know they manage the sort of separation between the urban and with the sort of various conditions of the natural and I think I agree with Lee that it's a very productive area and it seems to me made a good start. Poohoy might be a special case in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's going, Sarah, it's going. <laughs> um, actually on that one, Poohoy is probably quite a good 
good one to look at because there's a very strong community there. Mm. But did you, did you see the thing with Singapore businessmen who bought 2,000 hectares? Not really. Oh, awesome. 2010. What's he going to do? That's not the old forest, is it? The, that'll be interesting. Mm. He does, and he did. It's Bohemian, isn't it? It, 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 yeah. is, it, it is a Bohemian yeah. settlement, and, and the community there, um, like they've got quite a strong um, community association, and they are very keen to have their own structure plan and have their own limits. So um, they've never gotten very far with progressing that because it wasn't such a small settlement that it wasn't a big priority for the council. But um, but this in saying that there is some information out there on that. Would it be possible for maybe yeah. to talk to yeah, you? About? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I think there's one thing you're very interested in the whole idea of heritage and, mm. and lifestyle mm. and stuff. Yeah, been, yeah, but I mean, I definitely go and talk to people out there because they have a lot of a lot of ideas about how people should and shouldn't grow. So it'll be a really interesting mm. one to mm. focus on. So well chosen. Thank you. Um, you, at the start there you were talking about you know the admiring Auckland for its volcanoes, its coast, its, its sports fields and its parks and that, the green network is there. Is, is, are you considering that Auckland's good now? Is what we have now, do you think, is that good? Yes, that, is that what fantastic. You, so I is that what you're going to base your, yeah. Yeah, you're going to work towards that? Mm. Um, I think the current uh, relationship between urban and the green space in Auckland city is very good, fantastic. For me, it's an uh, ideal of a form, and yeah. <coughs> ideal lifestyle. So what I'm saying is, if uh, Auckland City uh, is growing in the future, we should keep this lifestyle and keep this relationship, keep this interrelationship. Whatever the city, um, how big the city grew, and uh, whatever the density is, we should keep the interrelationship the close relationship between urban form and green space. Do you think that given the way that the um, population demographics and cultural mix of Auckland in particular is changing so fast with, with migration, mm -hmm. do you think that everybody shares those values, the need for the green space? Do you think that what, you know, what we see now will remain relevant as the population changes? I think everyone should, should share the green space value. Oh, don't skip the answer. It's just maybe it's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Right. Yeah, thanks very much.